Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach and uh, covering the modern day comic book industry is exactly like this title of an article from The Onion from 22 years ago. Man who thought he'd lost all hope loses additional bit of hope he didn't even know he still had. So I've done videos, other people have done videos on, um, I believe it was Will Robson uh, and then Zach Thompson specifically we're talking about not being paid uh, for work, although Zach Thompson didn't uh, say which company, Alex DeCampi basically outed him and said it's Aftershock. But it's looking like Aftershock and Valiant uh, have not been paying people. But uh, there's something that's so much worse. So before I start, first kill graphic novel. So lots of people have covered how you know these uh, artists have not been paid. Now, Christopher Cantwell, he was the uh, showrunner of Halt and Catch Fire, which was great for the first two seasons. And then it got really weird. I mean, by the last season, the women were essentially Madeline Pryor when she turned into the Goblin Queen. They were supernatural. If there would have been another season of Halt and Catch Fire, the women would have been able to actually fly. So I'm not going to bury the lead. They decided to pay the millionaire first. They decided to pay the most famous person and then the poors, they got paid eventually. So he says, late payments to the artists effectively killed. This is a very strange use of the, I do not approve of this use of the forward slash where there is a space in between the two. Oh, that bothers me. Late payments to the artists effectively killed space forward slash space paused indeterminately an original four issue I co-created with Aftershock. Have had good faith combos with EIC Brian, but with two issues done, no movement. If within a year you don't have art costs to finish two issues within your budget, then your whole enterprise should be called into question. This statement says all under contract will be paid, but when? No word on that for months now. Zero direct communication quote, late, unquote, at a certain point becomes, quote, non, unquote, if your income has a giant hole in it for six plus months. Artists, colorists, letterers, and writers should not have to be bookkeepers and accountants for imprints with business affairs, accounting, and legal departments. On the TV space, forward slash, space, film side, unions have won important contract terms like, quote, timely, unquote, and, quote, pay or play, unquote. I have been taken care of across the board by every imprint I've worked for, including Aftershock, where I'm paid out on the series after delivering all contracted work. But it rankles when colleagues suffer, taken advantage of for choosing to pursue a vocation they love, ignored as if they don't exist, and when our most valuable assets, our ideas and efforts, languish in the mismanaging hands of those firms and people we trusted with them, that and all this armchair devaluing by AI enthusiasts is frankly dispiriting and fairly infuriating. Then he starts talking about some TV stuff. At the end of the day, it's important to remember they can't do what we do. So they should pay us for what we do, on time. And they should treat us with respect through proper professional communication about project status, space forward slash space financial issues. Y'all just soaked up Probably hundreds of thousands of dollars of taxpayer money over the last few years with PPP loans. You should have some sort of financial cushion. Here's another guy who started a career. It sounds like it was going pretty well, but basically said like, hey, I'm out of here. This is not a properly run industry. It was fun, but actually it wasn't fun. And now I'm just going to leave. And you'll get people like Alex DeCampi signal boosting stuff like this. Here's the problem. So they're talking about Aftershock. And this guy's like, L-O-L-O-L-O-L-O-L. See, shame goes a long way. I have no sympathy for IP farms that fuck over creators. And then Alex says, and I think folks are going to start talking about the other two to three indies who aren't paying now too. Well, if you know they're not paying, then why wouldn't you say it right now? It's because these people who are whistleblowers right now, they're also in the whisper networks. And they also have entangling alliances with people. The reason Aftershock is getting put on blast is because none of these people have pitches in with them. If they did, they wouldn't be saying anything. Because they know about other indies that are not paying people out. But they're friends with the people who work there, they're friends with the owners, 
or they've got a pitch in. Now, the thing that got buried in here was Christopher saying that he got paid first. Now, I know there's this thing to say that anyone who works in Hollywood is a millionaire, and they might be, but they also have to pay a lot of people. They got to pay agent, lawyer, accountant. A million dollars in LA is very different than a million dollars in Kansas. So I think one of the things people are saying is, well, why doesn't he just pay them? Well, that's not his job. His job was to write. He did his job. He turned in the scripts. He got paid. That's fine. It's not his problem. It's a problem of the company. And I would also say it's a problem of the editor. Because in most cases, the editor is going to choose who they're hiring. If you choose someone to work, if you offer them work, and you talk about the page rate, and you agree on it, and then they do the work, you don't get to say, oh, shit, it's payroll. Bro, if you're in a physical office, payroll is probably two doors down. If you work remotely, you know their email. You know their phone number. Call them. We're getting these people up on their you know, justice horse striding around, but you know the other companies that don't pay. And you don't say it because you're friends with them or you still want to work with them. So this kind of got glossed over. I didn't really notice anyone focusing in on this. But there are two very cynical things that are happening right here. Number one, Aftershock is paying the millionaire first. Probably low single digit millionaire, but he's still a millionaire. And they're doing that so he will work with them again. And so that he doesn't use his platform to, quote, blackball them. Because he can live without the pay. He got it. It's nice, but he can live without it. These colorists, these letterers, they cannot live without that pay. And they are being strung along and being paid five to ten weeks later than they're supposed to be paid. And sometimes even longer than that. They're scared into silence. And these justice heroes over here will only call out companies where they don't have friends and they don't have pitches in with them. And the editors are just saying, oh, you know, it's a payroll issue. Bro. There's like seven people who work at your company. Go talk to payroll. If not, you are equally to blame. If the editor knows that freelancers are having problems getting paid at their company, they don't get to just, oh, oh I don't work in payroll. You work next to them. Or you're in a Zoom call with them once a week. And it's the responsibility of the EIC, payroll, and the editor to make sure that the freelancers get paid, not just the millionaires. Also, if you're aware of two to three other indie companies who aren't paying, then you need to talk about it now and not let other people start working for them when you know they won't get paid for months after they turn in their invoice. Anyway, before I go, first kill graphic novel, link is in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye.